Einstein's theory of general relativity has survived a major examination. Here's what you need to know. Einstein's theory of relativity has passed a huge test involving pulsar stars, extremely dense neutron stars that emit beams of radiation and particles from their magnetic poles. Researchers writing in their journal, Physical Review X, observed a double pulsar system for 16 years, using large telescopes to note changes in the timing of flashes they produce that are visible from Earth, according to the conversation. They were attempting to compare what they saw to the theory of general relativity, which suggests the ultra-dense double pulsar system, which rotates very consistently, strains the fabric of space-time, sending gravitational ripples away at the speed of light that incrementally drain the system of orbital energy. Using the flashes visible from Earth, the researchers measured the amount of energy taken away by these gravitational waves, causing tiny changes in orbital motion, and found it closely matches what Einstein's general relativity predicts, with the latest observations from the study suggesting an energy loss of 0.013%, according to the American Physical Society. However, the research does not mean scientists will stop testing Einstein's theory, for one crucial reason. General relativity is not compatible with the other fundamental forces described by quantum mechanics. It is therefore important to continue to place the most stringent tests upon general relativity as possible to discover how and when the theory breaks down, one study co-author explained in a statement cited by Space.com. Exactly one year ago, we told you that scientists at CERN had released a conceptual plan for an even bigger particle accelerator called the Future Circular Collider, or FCC. Well, now it seems like the concept will become a reality, and the uses of this new collider have been narrowed down. Here is what you need to know. On June 19th, the CERN Council in Geneva, Switzerland approved the construction of a new 100km circular supercollider called the Future Circular Collider. This new collider is 73 kilometers larger than the Large Hadron Collider. The construction is expected to begin in 2038 and cost at least 21 billion euro. According to Nature, the new collider will be developed in two stages. In the first stage, CERN will create an electron-positron collider with the goal of creating and studying Higgs boson particles. In the second stage, the collider will be turned into a proton-proton smasher with capabilities of reaching collision energies of 100 teraelectron volts. Currently, the Large Hadron Collider can reach 16 teraelectron volts. This collider would be used to look for and study new particles. CERN has emphasized the importance of this new collider, but not everyone in the scientific community is happy about this project being approved. If you ask Sabine Hassenfelder, a physicist and research fellow at the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies in Germany, the world isn't in need of another gigantic particle collider. That was basically the actual title of her op-ed for the Scientific American. One of Hassenfelder's main concerns is cost. She estimates the new collider would potentially cost $1 billion a year. To Hassenfelder, this is too high a price to pay for research that could be done using alternative tools and methods. She also calls out the fact that this collider is being prioritized at a time where the world is falling apart. In her own words, why, for example, do we still not have an International Center for Climate Predictions, which by current estimates would cost only 1 billion US dollars spread over 10 years? That's peanuts compared to what particle physics sucks up, yet vastly more important. Or why, you may have wondered recently, do we not have a center for epidemic modeling? She seems to have a point, don't you think, Tomo Sapiens? But the peeps at CERN aren't the only ones spending money on colliders. Just two years ago, the US National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine endorsed the development of a multi-million dollar particle accelerator project. The US National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine has endorsed the development of a multi-million dollar particle accelerator project. The electron-ion collider will consist of intersecting accelerators, one blasting a beam of electrons and the other a beam of protons or ions to nearly the speed of light. The beams are made to collide at intersecting points, which are surrounded by detectors to record the resulting interaction. Each collision generates virtual photons, particles of light that penetrate through the proton or nucleus to tease out the structure within, including the distribution of quarks and gluons. The proposed machine would be able to help physicists understand where the mass of a proton comes from, how it gets its spin, and how gluons work. Two facilities have submitted proposals to host the EIC. Brookhaven National Laboratory has a proton accelerator, but no electron ring. 
while Jefferson Lab has the electron accelerator but will need a proton ring. The Department of Energy is currently building a 730 million U.S. dollar facility for rare isotope beams and may not be able to fund the proposed collider until after 2020. So for now, the two labs are collaborating on R&D. And of course, China is also in on the collider construction race. Also two years ago, the Chinese Institute of High Energy Physics announced it would also be building a particle accelerator over the next decade. China wants to make a very powerful scientific gizmo. The Chinese Institute of High Energy Physics is planning to construct a particle accelerator over the next decade. It is to be situated near Qinghuangdao City, east of Beijing. Dubbed the Circular Electron-Positron Collider, the project is expected to be five times more powerful than the Large Hadron Collider in Europe. It will be located in a 100-kilometer underground tunnel. The project will be a double-ring collider with electron and positron beams in separate pipes and will circulate these in opposite directions. If successful, researchers also plan to build a super-proton-proton collider and use it to collide electrons with positrons. Scientists behind the project expect the collider could potentially generate more than a million Higgs particles and others such as WNZ bosons. A prototype is planned before the actual collider is built, and that eight-year mega project is set to begin in 2022. Researchers are trying to make tiny wormhole analogs with quantum circuits. Scientists have proposed to build a functional wormhole tunnel by simulating quantum entangled black holes in a lab. Quantum Magazine reports that linked black holes are theoretically able to teleport quantum information via the tunnel. Black holes were thought to totally obliterate objects they consume. However, the experiment will test a new idea in physics that evaporating black holes actually send information about subsumed objects back to the universe via Hawking radiation. Citing California Institute of Technology physicist Safir Nazimi, the outlet reports the research team believes a black hole could be forced to disgorge intact information after it is entangled with another black hole on a quantum level. Stanford University's Adam Brown is cited as saying quantum circuitry could make a functional analog for entangled black holes. If the theory is correct, this circuitry would be able to instantly transmit and decrypt qubits, also known as quantum teleportation. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.